try to, to run to the history of uh, stocks of cell. Um, um, I think maybe not everybody knows uh, stocks of cell, or does everybody know it? No. No. All right. Well, yeah. well um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to to do this in a, in a few slides um, to tell you about our history since we are founded in 1956. Uh, when the city of Amsterdam was in a slightly different condition than today. Um, you see that the most important uh, issue was that we had the Second uh, World War, where there was quite a lot of damage, not actually by bombs, but more by the empty houses, which were taken down in the, in the winter, just to put in the, in the heating systems. Um, so there was this desperate need for restoration and also there, there was a slightly different way of looking to uh, renewing a city. At the Siam, probably you know it if you're an architect, but where they wanted to have um, the, the heart of the city should be the, where you work and where you live should be the Belmont near or Almere. We were founded in 1956. So this is the part of Amsterdam and this was one part of the plans of Amsterdam where you can see the, the, the metro on the line. You can see it today because it, it's actually built. Um, <coughs> most of you will know this place, or not? Utrechtstraat. Utrechtstraat. <coughs> Almost right. i show you how it looks today. Uh, it was the Weeslerstraat. So, um, and this is the part of the, the new city which was realized. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's quite nearby, so you can uh, go there if you want. You can see. Um, those are the, the goals of, uh, of Stadsverstel. We buy um, uh, threatened buildings and usually listed monuments and give them um, a new use. We want to, to make dwellings because uh, the founders of Stadsverstel, they, they said um, this city is, is still suitable to, to live in. I mean, you can also live in Almere, but you can also live in the city of Amsterdam. And if we restore uh, the buildings, then we try to keep them and, <coughs> and uh, uh, make sure that, that there will be uh, good maintenance of the buildings and also that they will stay in the use that we restored it for. Um, here's some examples. This is the Vijzelgracht uh, in the corner with the with the Prins, Prinsgracht. Um, it, it looks like this today. Here you can see the, the part where we are making a new uh, metro line. Um, we actually uh, uh, we were a housing association, which is like a non profitable uh, way of uh, making housing. At a, at a lower cost. But we are also a, a public limited liability com company. So we have shareholders. One of the, the founders of Stadsverstel was the, the, the boss of the Amsterdam Brewery, uh, Jan Six van Hillegom, quite a famous uh, person in Amsterdam. But we pay annual dividend to, to our shareholders. It's 5%. Today you should say that's that's good, but um, in 1956, 5% was like less than half the interest you could get on uh, on your money. Um, today we use other ways of financing our project with the National Association Fund. If we make any profit, it will not go to the shareholders, so they get 5%, not more. Um, and also in case of a, a dissolution. The, there's a, a larger value in the company than, than uh, the amount of uh, stocks or, uh, uh, that we own to the shareholders. So if there's then money left, it will go to the Central Fonds Volkshuisvesting, so into housing. Um, this is how we do the job. We buy, we restore, and then we, we, we get a we put it in the market and we maintain it. The buildings. Well, here you see how the how they look like before and after. And that's some examples. Actually, here the raised type. 
also where the, 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 the beams are on the outside of the building to, to avoid them from coming into the street. Um, yeah, also a lot of buildings where the, the last part of the building was gone, and then we, we restored like that. And here's another example. Actually, this house is is a 100% rebuild because when we started to renovate the building, it's the the houses next door were start moving towards the building, so it was quite a dangerous operation. Um, Amstelveld, it was a quite good parking uh, spot in Amsterdam. It's now a, a nice place to, to be. Um, in 1986, not too long ago, it looked like this. Um, and we bought this building, an old church. Uh, uh, and now its uh, offices with a yeah, multi functional uh, use. Um, uh, this is actually my office. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, could be worse, but yeah. <laughs> don't want our children. <laughs> uh, but uh, the inside of the church is still used for a service, probably today, <coughs> this evening, I'm not sure, but uh, on Sunday morning it is. Um, and we also try to make cultural events and concerts, but also weddings and even uh, hemelvaarten, uh, I say, funerals. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We have about 624 buildings, we do about 10 projects each year, we have uh, more than 1,000 dwellings and 200, 250 office spaces and 41 uh, cafes and restaurants and uh, also a lot of shops in the, in the office space or shops. We now work at the area of the Stelling from Amsterdam, so we are not only not just being busy in Amsterdam but also around and actually also working on parts of the stem from Amsterdam, trying to uh, give them new use to that. We started with um, MVO in Dutch, Maatschappelijk Verantwoord Onderneming, and I think it's quite well translated into corporate social responsibility. And um, that's where we ask ourselves with everything we'll do, is it good for the people, is it good for the planet, and is it profitable? And not just like, can we make 5%, but if it's, it doesn't make sense to do what we do. Well, why do we do this? Well, of course, it is necessary. It's also for our um, image that we, we are actually the, the largest company in the Netherlands for uh, restoring uh, buildings. Um, but we also have a, a, a public partnership with our shareholders, but also we have a, a good relations with the, all the, well, the city of Amsterdam, but also Haarlem and the, the area we showed you. Um, yeah, we have a sort of an example for other restoring organizations. They look a lot about, and they ask us a lot, how do you do this? And we'll, we tell them then, because we, we don't have to um, keep our knowledge to ourselves. And we want to be ready for the future, of course. Well, I have a, a small part of examples about um, what we did in practice, uh, but it's not the complete uh, part of our NPO, uh, uh, of course. Uh, well, we I'll show you some heating systems. This is a, a buffering system where you put, in summer you put uh, warmth in the ground and in the winter well, you take it out again. Um, that's of course a smart way, but then it actually means that you will have to make your uh, environment cooler in summer. But we don't have a lot of um, houses where we need to do this. We also looked at the, the mini power plant. It's a small energy uh, 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 system working on gas, and as, as soon as you start to ask for electricity, it will produce 
also heat as a rest product. That's what also is happening in a larger scale uh, uh, near Eiburg, where the big new uh, part is also making heat as a rest product for the electricity. And they put it to Eiburg in large heating pipes. We try to, to do this on builders, but then the scale is is too small very soon. So, um, then we looked at uh, heating pump systems. And heating pump is an, uh, yeah, a warm pump. It's a, like uh, a reversed uh, refrigerator system. So an electrical system of making uh, heat. And then you only need uh, uh, not too much energy to, to, to create your heat. So uh, you can take it from the ground, we, and then if you put a new pulse in the, in the ground, uh, you can also put a line with it and, and try to get the heat out of the ground. You can also take it up from the water, it's quite more easy. One of the architects thought that it, mean, that it would mean ice skating on the canals every winter, but uh, it, it, we can't take that much energy out of it, I'm afraid. This system um, we have uh, made in a couple of buildings. This is the heating pump with, with air. It also works if it's freezing outside, not if it's minus 20, but until minus 5 or minus 10, it still works. But this is the principle. The, for example, the, the, the air is going in on 12 degrees, leaving the system at 5 degrees, and it can make with electricity make your house warm. This is what you need. Outside the system, this part, it looks like an air conditioning, and the people of Monument uh, Care who look after the uh, restoring projects we do, they kept asking, but why are you putting air conditioning in this? Okay. And we didn't, again, no, it's not an air conditioner, this is a system of make a heating system. Well, this is the inside part of the, the, the system. So it's connected also to the, the, the regular heating system because it cannot uh, produce too much power. So if you have a really cold day, then it, it's not sufficient. So we also use the, the things you saw at the uh, Fennekens, the, the floor heating system, also the smart thermostat that the responds to light or to movement inside the house. So if, if there's nobody moving in the house and you forgot to put the heating system down, this do it for you. Well, there's there's a lot of uh, more to use, of course. Um, power saving, of course. Uh, I, I don't know. What, I didn't find a translation on the warmte terugwin instance. We everybody talks about day to day. Did you wait day? Yeah, it's a day to day. So it's, uh, you get your heat back. So you have to put fresh air in, into your house. Um, Probably with heat, heat, hmm? heat recuperation unit. Ah, and heat re recuperation unit. The, the, the biggest issue here is to, to get a, a closed system on the inside of your house. Because it, you want to uh, get outside air into your house and uh, at the same amount you put it out. But of course there's a lot of leaks usually in the, in the monumental world. This is the system you need to play, so you also need quite a large uh, top to place it. Um, for water you can use the same system, well it's quite it's a little bit of an open door menu. The examples of uh, isolation, uh, Fennec already showed you, be careful, uh, because in, in the construction it can cause damage. damage. If it would be an outside wall and you would uh, isolate it from the inside, the, the, yeah, well, the, the, the beams will start to rot uh, later on. Um, and it's hard to fit into, into your windows, for example. Here you see the, where they, where, yeah, the problem that you get if you, if you do it. Um, this is the system uh, we used for uh, isolating the windows. So you put a new window on the inside of your old window. It also has a like a better view from the outside because the 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 
usual double glass has a, a double breaking index, so the the windows will appear more like a mirror. And uh, with this system, it's you have well less the effect. And this one helps also with the uh, uh, air recuperation system because it it also keeps the um, well the air where you want to have it. So this is a system where but you have to first open that window and then you can open the other window if you want to have the outside air on the inside. Well, and of course we um, we use the LED lighting in the in the stairways and uh, that it reacts in movement. Uh, Water saving taps, well, you can make the list quite long, of course. Um, but one of the most important things is that yeah. how to uh, and influence the behavior of your people. So that's also where we try to make solar cells for electricity. There was a building, we could only put two solar cells for, for one uh, for one home, but we still we did, because then the people also start to realize what they they want to know how how much electricity did I get this month or this year, so they start to look at their the the amount they got in, and they also then start to look at the amount that's going out. So we hope that it will affect uh, yeah the behavior of the people who with us and. Um, the last slide for you. <laughs> we are the co-founder of the of the the Groene Grachten, so we we actually yeah we help them also to um, yeah, to get uh, organized. Um, they lived with us for uh, for a year, um, uh, and this is one of the results um, where we had a, a pilot together where we tried to to show in a in a nice way what. All the things, or some of the things I just showed you, and uh, we are still uh, uh, working together with uh, uh, with a lot of people and organizations who try to uh, work for a for a better future. Thank you. Uh, guys, stepping into the discussion later on this uh, after the coffee break. Um, Stadtrester was founded in 1956, is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, looking at it, say, 2040, mm -hmm. uh, or 64, um, <laughs> the next 50 years, what are the biggest technological development you're looking at at this moment, which will redefine or be used by Stadtrester for most others in the heart? Yeah. Development is going very fast, technological mm -hmm. development are going rapidly. Yeah. What kind of impact yeah. does that have on an organization as Stadtrester? Yeah, well, um, actually, we, we also work uh, a little bit with trial and error. So we, if, if there's a new uh, uh, invention, uh, we are also try to to yeah just use it if it's possible. But one of the important parts always is if it's suitable for monuments. So the 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 things I just showed you with the yeah, the yeah, with the, the unit where you can get your heat back. Mm -hmm. You also have to be able to put all the canals in the in the in the houses. So that's where we use the old uh, canals for, uh, for, for for fireplaces. Also to so it's always it's it's um, uh, it's it's very uh, hard to to find where how far can we go. With, with our uh, uh, trying to to get it into our buildings mm. and um, yeah, not not demolish the the values of the buildings. This is so cool. Okay. Yeah. And uh, one of the things, my knowledge, amongst other structures, still collaborating or is a, a knowledge base for parties in Suriname, Indonesia, yeah. and what have you, looking at it from Club of Amsterdam mm -hmm. uh, perspective. What is the value? you're getting out of it? What kind of knowledge do you get from, say, Indonesia? Is there something which we can use from, well, uh, Bali, which we can use here at uh, the Grachten? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, maybe it is. Um, it's, it's hard to say. That's not the, the, the incentive we are taking part of it. 
for example, the, 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 the founding of the Suriname uh, company for Stadsherstel, it was also subsidized by, the, by Amsterdam. So they really asked us to, to go help and put our uh, business case into uh, Paramaribo and try to, to make it work over there. Um, of course, we, we, we looked at the way uh, this city was built and how also people are, are looking at their heritage, which is uh, often quite different than the way uh, we look at our heritage. And yeah, of course, that's because with us it's 400 years old, where Amsterdam was the center of the world and all the slaves were coming to us. Parts we want to try to forget, also, but um, but of course, in uh, yeah, Suriname is also a very different uh, way it was built, of course, um, and those people they also very have a different perspective of looking at the um, the values of what was built.